Hey, hey, hi, I'm IT PhD, and today I'll tell you about Conio library. So, Conio.h, I'll tell you about it, and we would develop today in this lesson such simple game, kind of you like game, where you hunt goblins, and uh, by defeating them you get gold. So, today we will do it. But first, uh, some story behind... Uh, this library so it's appeared very long time ago in the early 80s um, in lattice compiler it was first um, appeared and then it's moved to ms dos so microsoft uh, used it before they uh, wrote their own compiler so conio library give you plenty of different possibilities to control your cursor and control your input this is uh, just some functions from this library most uh, most famous it's get which give you possibility to get a, a character from the user input without echoing on, on the screen so on at this library it's where you could find it it's important thing so yeah there are plenty of different functions you could find this uh, library in some windows compilers or in mindgv so how to understand do you have this library or not so for example if you download mindgv you could simply just try to find it by in the search so you see we found that our mindgv has this library the thing is the interesting thing and you see here you could find some of these functions but not all of them i mean mindgv version of this library it's very limited it's much more limited than uh, Legit MS-DOS or Borland ones. So, for example, I have installed Borland. I have installed uh, C++ Builder by Borland. And there, this library has much uh, bigger function, functions, much more of them. So, another thing, for example, if you do not use MinGV but use Sigvin, if we would look here for Conio, doesn't exist here though it's this um sigvin it's kind of analog to mingv so in sigvin there is no uh conio h while in mingv it exists also in mingv uh, 32 it's limited very but in mingv 64 it's uh, quite it's got qu much more functions but also not all of them so let's start working it's just small history and understanding for you how where to get this library so you could just uh, download mingv if you have linux operational system you wouldn't be able to work with this library unless you are uh, you will download it from special github repository some people they trying to kind of compile make it and uh, if you are a linux guy much better to use and curses so even at windows i'll my next video will be about and curses and then curses library give you much more um, interesting functions and ways to control your screen and make like console games and console applications so next time we will talk about and curses and about pd curses different libraries so let's start uh, developing our game uh, our simple game uh, first of all first of all let's uh, as always make uh, include this library yeah. include let's make it a bit smaller yeah include conio.h and make our main function mint main void and there we will just return zero so first of all let's check does it library works to do so we would use functions get ch would basically take a character from your input and it's do not show it on the screen so if we would use get char let's try let's make a char action so it's kind of action which a user performed like you pressed a or b or something so we would make now action 
equal to get char. So we would take user input and then we will print it. We would print it action. So we would just simply print this action. Yeah. So if we would compile it now, how to compile it? Um, so I use uh, I compile this in Notepad++ with a simple script with GCC compiler. By the way, um, if you have two GCC compilers installed, yeah, in your environment library uh, path variable, you could choose which to use. So, for example, I have Sigwin and MinGV. So if I move MinGV up, la, yes, uh, then it will have more priority and your operation system will use MinGV. But if I want to use Sigwin, for example, for some networking, because MinGV it's very limited in terms of ne network libraries, then I could like give more priority to Sigwin. And then com common GCC will be used from Sigwin. Yeah, it's a small life hack for you. So uh, I'll use just this script. So let's run it. And we kind of, you see, I enter, I press A and then I press enter. Nothing happened. Why? Because it just um, disappear very fast. So how if we'll do it like this, if I make it in from PowerShell and I start our program. Ah, it's main. Okay. If I start our program like this and then I would do it. You see, it works. So when I press enter, it's printed. It, 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 it printed. Uh, but here it do not show because I started with a new screen. That's why uh, for now let's make to get chars. Yeah, you see it works. So we print and it works. But it's get char. It's like standard function. By the way, uh, actually you see we have a warning here because to use printf we must uh, include doh so we must include standard input output library so now if we would compile it yeah it work and we do not have this um, warning here but uh, what's the thing about conio that it gives you possibility to enter characters without uh, echoing on the screen so it's better to show it like this Let's make it like a cycle. So we would make cycle while. So you will see how it work. Uh, yeah, let's make just uh, endless cycle for now. So it will be more simple f for you to, to understand what's going on. So we would print everything at every time when we would enter symbol, it will be printed. So let's start. For example, Q. Yeah, you see, when I print it once and then I press enter, it's kind of you have double Q. But now, if we would replace get get char with get ch, so get ch it's a function of Conio library. So we could say that, like, okay, we use it for Conio, or um, yeah, for get ch. This one we use for printf. It's like comments. So now we will try get. And now if I press Q, you see it's appear. I do not even press enter. So it's uh, Conio, this get give you possibility to uh, just press a number. For, for example, I, I'll press one now. I pressed one, I do not press enter. So this get give you possibility to get uh, buffer without entering uh, line feed character which is basically enter yeah so you do not need press enter and uh, yeah it's kind of fun that's why a lot of people they like conio but yeah it's guys it's outdated library better to use and curses but yeah in this lesson i'll uh, work with it just for tutorial purposes and kind of it's kind of traditional <laughs> thing okay under windows
so what we will do now you know that uh, get sheets very nice thing so first of all before we would start our game our kind of input yeah we will need input later on first of all when you just start something like this you want to uh, ra to draw a field where your character will run around so as you remember example which i just showed to us so what's our kind of technical task so let me compile game which i already made so our task is to create such field so our character will be able to run around and if it will meet goblin to kill it but not be able to run through walls for example so first of all we need to uh, make such field like a room we need to print room so how to do it uh, better to start with a simple prototype so let's create first a uh, just square to make square we could uh, simply use for loop so we make let's make um, two variables for now we do not need this action char so we will create int x and int y so basically uh, what we are doing we will have kind of a square and to print it we would need to print it one one by one so we will just put our hash our hash symbol one by one in each uh, line so we would have like uh, y coordinate and we will have x coordinate so in our for loop what we should do uh, for example this place it will be uh, 0 0 coordinate this place will be 1 0 why 1 0 because kind of here we have x from 0 to like 10 or 20 so y we would have from 0 to 22 uh, so if we would go here if we would go there then kind of for example this place it will be uh, it will be if it's x so it will be first it will be 5 0 because y it's second coordinate so it's 0 so for example this place will be uh, 5 1 so we what we need now we need to go first of all we take first y coordinate row we take this row this first row and we fill it and at the end of the row we go uh, we put uh, our next sign yeah next line and then we start with a new line and then we also print everything one by one so this way we would create our field let's go okay so we make our we will start as we need to start with the y we would make y equal to zero then if y smaller than so we need to define certain size like size of our box so what will be our size of our room the thing is that your terminal each terminal has its own size for example for windows it will be like 120 by like 30 or something like this 20 or something so most usual in uh, linux uh, width it's 80 and height it's like 20 something but we will create just small room so we would make our room like uh, 20 by 10 so 20 x and 10 y and we already could create kind of an array so two-dimensional array where we would put our coordinates so we would create a map uh, with 20 20 x and 10 y the thing is that in this array we start array with a zero 
so it's basically from element 0 to element 19 so it's like kind of 20 there is a 20 boxes and each box has its own number from box number one, 0 till box number 19 um, that's why that's why if we would like feel if we would feel our uh, room like this so we would need to start from 0 and end at 19 so better actually to make it not um, so we would have here like 19 element not 20 so better to make it 21 and 11 yeah so we would have um of so we would have from 0 till 20 yeah so it's kind of minus 1 so we would have now if y less if while y less or equal to 20 then we go to next element yeah it's uh, we go through y so we let me open this so we go through y right now and then of course we want also kind of it's with field first filling first line so we now need to fill we went to, to first st stroke yeah to first row so we need now to go to the column and to go to the column we make inner cycle so it's four and it will have x coordinates from x zero while x less um yeah i by the way i messed everything here it should be y we have y a uh, 10 yeah not 20 and x will be 20 okay x plus plus so we now create our square let's test it print f this uh, array we would need it later on but for now i just created it for later so now print f let's uh, print just simply uh, let's print this character that's it so let's run first we need to, to close it okay of course i need to say that okay it's character array okay it's all right it's all right we need now uh, to define where where our row ends so we need to put a character which will end every every row so first of all let's make our loops let's make like borders for our loops and now we would make some checks so if you would look here what you could see uh yeah we see we, what we want we just let's make first let's make simple square so simple square we need to put empty character after each x which is equal to uh, 20. so let's make it if x equal to 20 then print so let's start now you see we did it we did it uh, but we have kind of problem with our first row it's because we have <laughs> we first we print um, next line and then our wall so it should be like this yeah you see we made our square room full of stone so now let's make it empty inside how to do so uh, if you would look at our prototype you could just draw it on the piece of paper with a pen it's best way always when you develop programs we see here 
interesting thing that here we have kind of uh, 20 lines and here we have 20 lines so you see a pattern and here we have only first and last symbol so the simplest way right now it's just to hard code this stuff so what we want to do we want to say that okay we would say if if y equal to zero so it's uh, our first line yeah or y equal to 10 you see it's our next last line then we want to print it as a lines like this yeah but but we would make else if here so we would have we would every time when our program will go it will uh, do everything consequently so we wouldn't get to uh, this we would go to one of our choices only so if we would make if another if it will work, work wrongly but we would make else if and less effectively yes so now else if if our uh, now if our y ah here we will yes now x so we would press we would just put this uh, wall here that's it so if our x equal to zero then we'd also uh, print our wall yes so next now if our x equal to 20 so w this one will print beginning of the wall and this one will print end of the wall so we would print um neck wall and next sign and in all other cases we would say like else then we will just uh then we wouldn't print anything actually <laughs> yes then we wouldn't print actually anything but we would need this else later on for our database so let's try okay yes we need actually we need to print because <laughs> um, as we print a each coordinate each location we must go through it so we must do, do this else actually so let's go back print f and we'll print just empty character here so now let's try it yay we made our box so it's already a nice achievement to be able to create such box so let's put our character now somewhere how to put character uh, first of all this is kind of map chords yeah um, yeah this is our map database we would use it a bit later but let's make x6 y y coordinates for our player player chords so at first x6 let's player will spawn like at coordinates 5 5 so somewhere here yeah player will will spawn so let's make it 5 5 now we need to generate uh, our player somewhere and uh, to do so we would just uh, just put it in the beginning so we'll make it else if and here we would put if so we need to print our player at the same place where cursor right now exists so if cursor for example 
here we would make check should we print player here no we do not need so each uh, each location we will check it one by one so if now x equal to x to player coordinate and here we need and we need strict rule and y equal to y yeah then we would print our character so let's test it yeah you see we printed we spawned our character on the battlefield now let's use power so th this thick thing which we did right now you do not need conio for it so that you see we just used plain c language with a for loop to draw this map in very simple way there are some uh, more complex uh, i'll show them in our next videos but yeah it's good tr for training so when you just start learning c this is perfect thing to draw such things to understand how algorithm works how to feel stuff how to fill errors with four so yeah it's very useful for you to complete it so yeah if you watch this video also start doing it together with me so next thing or you could watch first and then try to repeat it now we need to take to make our input so every time when player let's make it like first of all we need to add action so uh it's like which hotkey player will press and let we will make uh, our player go with a uh, w s d okay w a s d like you know in all shooters games modern games why these uh, letters in if we would next time when we would learn n curses we would use uh arrows like left right all these arrows we would use them and yeah <laughs> all, all these arrows we would use and uh but if you use conio if it's very kind of outdated thing it works weird with such special characters and you need to kind of clear buffer for them it's possible but it's kind of bad thing so i do not want to make everything too complex for you that's why we would use just wasd it will work all right so uh, let's make let's now get our input action equal to get ch and uh, our action will define the direction where our player will move so let's first uh, kind of make a cycle the best cycle here it's do while so first while so because first we want to draw this map and then if character performed a movement yeah then you will draw it again but with new coordinates that's why we would make do and all this stuff will go like this and here we'll be, we'll have while and inside of the while we will put our input character input so we would put here this get -ch. and also we would make such life hack so yeah we, we could actually make it just endless let's make it endless for now why not yeah so we already can uh, try to do it the only thing that yeah let me show okay uh we need yes we need to finish our do while like this so i forgot okay we have this thing the thing is that you see when we press any hotkey it's a drawing just another um if we work in terminal you know it's basically it's this similar terminal to powershell or common prompt so we we draw our game inside of this terminal that's why it's kind of when we when you 
put some command here, you uh, just it's go up, and here it's the same. So we need to clear our screen first uh, to be able to to go. So how to do it? There are different functions to clear screen. A lot of different functions. Uh, but for us, let's for the sake of simplicity, we'll use system function. So actually, uh, in Linux, you could use like here. Let, let me show you what we are doing. So if we would go with the PowerShell, we will go command prompt, and we would print something here to clear this te terminal. What we should we should put command CLS. So it's kind of clear screen. Yeah, under Linux. Uh, this command it's clear you see it works here too but it works not so well that's why we would use this clc command and to use it we need uh, to like call system function and uh, to call system function we need to include library windows include windows.h so we will do it for system it's always better to uh, kind of mark when you just learn which library, which functions uh, you choose. So now this uh, call system, it will clear our screen. We need to put it just before our cycle start. So now if I press some hotkeys, nothing happened, but we do not have this uh, endless drawing so what do we want here now we want when we press certain button we want to move our character we already assign kind of to action certain uh, hotkey certain key which we press so what we would do we want to make kind of checks so if action equal to a yeah then what we want to do let's start uh, okay let's a we want to yeah let, let's let's start with w i think it will be easier so if you press w to go up we should change our player coordinates uh, accordingly so y will will go plus one yeah so the same thing goes with other actions. So if action is S, but actually no, no, no. If you if we press uh, W, Y will go not plus but minus. Let me demonstrate it to you because <laughs> in real life, yes, we have kind of uh, regular X Y, but here our coordinates start start from starts from left top corner that's why if we would go up if we would go up we would reduce y coordinate so if we pressed w we want to reduce player coordinate so this this is our player we want to reduce y coordinate but while we press s to go down we want to increase our coordinate so let's make the same thing for a here we would for A, we would reduce X coordinate, and for double, uh, for D, we want to increase X coordinate. So let's test it now. Yeah, you see, it works. It works. Everything perfect. The only problem that our character can go out uh, through the can go through the through walls. Which is not really fun. We want uh, to make walls solid. We are like a ghost right now. So, how to do it? Here now, finally, we need to use our database, which we put to this array. What is array? So, basically, when we say that, okay, we have array uh, 2111, means that we create if we would make, let's first uh, learn about one dimension array. So if it will be map 21, what does it mean? It means that uh, inside of the memory of our computer, 
we cre we allocate 21 uh, build boxes where we could put character um, type value so character type value it's uh, is it unsigned it's from one minus yeah I, I i explained it in my previous videos so yeah, just look uh, my video about character types it's very important thing to understand but for now yeah we, we just put here kind of our we could put here symbols what's what we have here inside for example for example we could say that okay in this piece of uh, array in this box we would store that kind of coordinate zero coordinate it will be a wall but coordinate for example like six no it's five okay it's one two three four five so coordinate five we would have kind of empty space while here we have also uh, walls so it's how we store one dimensional array yeah like this one but if we would make it two-dimensional, so we would say like 11 here. What we basically make? We make just a new, we go to the um, Y kind of. We, we make like second dimension. And in this dimension, so each uh, piece of first uh, dimension this one so each box from first dimension now become array itself start of the array and it go down yeah so each of these boxes become its own array and um, that's what that's how it's kind of go so it's just make we making this huge table like this yeah and here we could feel it now yeah i hope i could can i uh told you a bit how how it works so now what we want we we have this kind of database right now this table with elements it's empty because here it's empty but we need to feel it because uh, if we would feel it then we could check is something inside of this array or not because when we just uh, have something on the screen we can't like look at the screen we can't force computer to look on the screen and understand what's at this position right now uh, yeah so you what you should do we, we can do it actually yeah but better when you do something like a map in your game or like uh, location in all games it works like you assign for each element on the screen each terrain element should have its own coordinates and you need to allocate it these coordinates it would be much effective than first draw it and then uh, check each now each uh, element coordinate so you need to store this coordinate right on that's why what we will do every time when we kind of uh, draw a wall we will also what we will do we would fill this array so we say that our array as you remember it's kind of map yeah so we say that map by coordinates y uh, not y but x y uh, now we would put here we will assign wall there you see so we filled the array with a wall sign here then here we would do the same and here we would want to do the same but we do not want to to fill array with this next line uh, symbol we do not need it we just need to fill our array with uh, this uh, with walls okay we did it and what now we want to do we want now to add check here so if player pressed certain hotkey our character coordinates changed but also if 
uh, these coordinates empty, he shouldn't. Uh, he should do it. But if if these coordinates they contain wall, he shouldn't be able to change coordinates. So we would add uh, like condition, and uh, if map uh, by these coordinates like uh, x x y y contain wall so if they contain wall he will be able to do it but so we need to say that they do not contain so if coordinates which we take player coordinates uh, don't contain wall we could do it but we do not need to take this this is basically will be coordinate of our player at current moment but we as we want to go in this case to the north we want to check uh, coordinate on the north and guys please don't do this to arrays uh, it will be it could make troubles so for arrays elements go with such stuff so yeah we just add this check everywhere yeah so it will be x plus one uh, uh, y plus one this will be x minus one this will be x plus one like this yeah so let's test it okay now I can't pass walls you see it works I'm trying to pass wall but I can't do it it's not possible great so we basically made our first prototype of roguelike game it's cool but now let's also spawn some enemies some goblins around yeah so we would be able to fight with them and get gold uh, to spawn goblin we need to spawn it at random spot somewhere so if they if goblin will spawn already always at the same place it will be very boring so first of all let's make uh, goblin coordinates so we would make like int our goblin will be a t t letter tx let's spawn our goblin like at uh, coordinates 11 and ty by default yeah we need to spawn to spawn him at some uh, predefined coordinates we could put them actually in, he could we could put him at random coordinates but yeah for the same uh, for the sake of simplicity let's start with a simple thing so let's first put our goblin so we put our player let's uh, place our uh, goblin so it will be kind of the same thing like this one but it will be not, we will check not for the player coordinates, but for coordinates of our goblin. Yeah, so let's try it. Okay. So if TX, oh yeah, 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 I made a mistake. It's better to go like this. Yeah. Yeah, we see we placed our goblin. But now if we would move on to it, uh, it wouldn't disappear. So let's make us to be able to defeat him. Uh, how to do so? We will do it. Uh, we will make just here. We'll make small checks for checking. Did we uh, cross goblin or not? So if our player coordinates equal to goblin coordin to goblin coordinates um, y and x basically and y equal to goblin y then what we do then we should uh, spawn goblin in some different place Yes, we, we will change coordinates of the goblin. So we would spawn it in some different spot. How to do so? First of all, yeah, let's make it just simple. 
thing we will test it like um, okay like this let's test it yeah you see it works yeah but now he kind of disappear uh, so we need to make randomize this stuff as you remember from one of my past lessons I explained you about random function we used to do lib dot h for this uh, rand function so what do we want we, we want to make these uh, coordinates random so first we would summon random function and here too yeah okay let's do it and this function the thing is that it should kind of give us number from one yeah because as we have our uh, coordinate we can't spawn goblin inside of the wall so we need coordinate not from zero but for one one till uh, like minus one to maximum so to do so we simply will make model as i sh explained that you explained you a model operation of, in our lesson about random numbers here it's perfect time to use it so we would go for so we, we will generate coordinate from uh, 0 till 19 uh, plus 1 why plus 1 because it's kind of random generate number from zero not because we kind of when when you make model when you make model it could give you zero so if you would for example uh, divide nine for nine it will be zero yeah not like this but like model uh, because it wouldn't have left over that's why we add one here so our minimum amount will be 1 and our maximum amount will be coordinate 20 uh, which is uh, uh, we do not want 20 yes we do not we want actually 19 because 20 it's our uh, wall yeah so we want actually 19 from 1 till 19 and here we would have it's x here we'll have y like 8 plus 1 so let's try it i do not recall priority for the module operator i think it's higher than plus but better always just in case put some brackets let's try okay okay you see our goblin now it changed its coordinates and we could defeat one goblin after another simple uh, simply like this you can uh, create a snake game and we would create snake game later on yeah you see by the way it, it's uh, appeared at the same spot it's funny yeah, it was funny you actually could prevent it so it's kind of you see right now we make debugging we look okay uh, what we have here and how we can uh, fix it by the way here I found another bug this spot I can't move uh, onto it at this particular small spot so yeah we could also think why it's so actually I think it's because we should fill our array with um, uh, with with empty characters too because array could have some rubbish some garbage uh, inside of the memory so you have memory with a lot of boxes and some of these boxes if you wouldn't put anything there they would have some rubbish so you should always kind of fill them properly so now i filled it so let's start again yeah now i yeah i think it was just a random thing 
but it could could happen so always fill your array properly also yeah you could make it not to appear at the same spot so it's kind of homework for you uh, but we what what we want to do we want to print also we want to get some gold after defeating goblins it's actually it's very easy to do so first we would make uh, gold gold total so uh, how much gold we would have overall and we will print this and we would have gold or which uh, drop from goblin so every time like uh, goblin fight it's better to make such uh, stuff to check check for walls check controls yeah something like this because uh, later on when you would come back to this program like in a month or in a year you might be kind of shocked <laughs> okay so first of all if we kill goblin we want to get some gold so how to do it we would make um, gold so first we would make gold zero and then uh, our gold will be equal to again let's uh, make random number it will be like from one from zero till uh, okay from not from zero but from one uh, till uh, 10 gold we will get i think it's like legged way for goblin so let's now print some messages we need to print them um, kind of after we printed the map so we would print them here print f and we would print gold how much gold you have and uh, amount of gold will be gold amount e um, we just kind of add our gold which we get from goblin here yeah and then we will make uh, goblin gold zero again so we wouldn't get in uh, some uh, duplicates okay i forgot something i think uh, goblin amount it's goblin total it's uh, always hard to make videos because you're nervous and you make such stupid mistakes sorry okay so here now we have zero gold we defeated golem goblin we have five gold 10 gold 13 gold so we can uh, make gold then we will be able to sp to spend it in the tavern to buy some drinks <laughs> another thing let's also write so right now we do not have enough immersion above nar narrative into the game because it's kind of you can't understand player when he plays this game like if you would show this game to your parents or your friends they wouldn't understand well, what's going on but if you would write something something like let's put it uh, next line and we would print f here you f defeated a goblin and got percent d gold and we would print it actually uh, before our gold like this it will be better mm -hmm. so here we would print how much gold we get from defeating goblin Uh, and two next lines and here we would have so if we would do it like this it wouldn't work uh, well 
print f yeah mistype it would, wouldn't do well because when we you see we need to check killed go we killed goblin or not so to do this check we'll just put here a flag so we'll, let's make a flag we would create character um let's call it like flag okay defeat flag by default it will be equal to zero so if we would defeat a goblin i do not like to use word kill i do not like to kill stuff but defeating goblin he might run away or something like this so when we defeat we make it one you see so if if our coordinates equal to goblin coordinates we kind of defeat it and then if this flag it's not zero then we would print um, this stuff yeah. else if um, we didn't uh, finish goblin yet we will just print our gold so Let's test it. Okay, I want to move up a bit our printing of our gold amount. Mm, yeah. Yeah, uh, we need equal amount of uh, next lines like this. So now you see now you understand what's going on Bam. but we do not want to print this thing if uh, if goblin already killed so we need to make our flag after we fixed that okay we killed the goblin defeated goblin now we need to put flag back to back to zero like this okay now disappear this line now we can defeat goblins and get gold so it looks solid nice prototype for the game and uh, yeah you could enhance it a lot of times but uh, we would enhance it already in our next video we will go with the uh, n-curses library which give you much more possibilities so I'll show you how to work with n curses because this library is fun. You see, it gives you possibility to write such uh, simple but yet effective and nice games. But uh, n curses, it's kind of very big tool and um, kind of modern tool because this library is a bit outdated. Still, it gives you quite fun possibility. So it's perfect for training your skills. Uh, in C language. Thank you very much for watching. Hope this video helped you and uh, please write your comments, put likes to support me. That'll make more videos for you. Don't forget to subscribe. Bye bye.